Good morning everyone. Today I'm going to make my mother's famous pasty recipe. Pasties were a food that was originated in the upper peninsula of Michigan for the miners that worked the copper mines. It was an easy transportable food. I will post the recipe but I do this in batches. In this bowl of the food processor I've put two and a half cups of flour and one teaspoon of salt. I'm now adding one cup of shortening. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to pulse this. You pulse it until it gets to be this consistency where it looks like it's easily clumped together and looks like little pieces of pea-sized flour. I had already done the first batch, so now I have a t both batches in the bowl. Then you take one and a half cups of ice-cold water that I've had chilling, and I put most of it in, but I might reserve a tablespoon or so. And you mix this with the water. And you're going to mix it until it comes together into a ball. By the way, if you do not have a food processor, you can use a pie uh, wedge to mix the shortening with the flour. All right, this is pretty much ready. And so what I'm going to do is take some flour onto my clean counter and I'm going to dump the flour mixture out. And just bring it together into a ball. Add a little bit more flour if necessary by sprinkling a little bit more on top. I think this one feels pretty good so it doesn't need a lot of flour. And you notice I'm not really kneading it, I'm just bringing it together in a ball. Now I'm going to cover that with some plastic wrap and it will chill for about an hour in the refrigerator. While the dough is chilling, I have prepped my veggies to go into the pasties. I have about four or five fairly large potatoes that we diced up. I have carrots, I think we used five or six carrots, and one large onion. In addition to that, I have two and a half pounds of hamburger. And when I say hamburger, it's important to use hamburger because of the fat content. So I'm going to mix the potatoes with the rest of the veg. And I typically add some pepper. Doesn't have to be a lot, just enough to give it some flavor. And about a teaspoon of salt. You can skip the salt if you want, but this is how my mom did it and how our family likes it. So the next step after you've mixed it all together is to take your hamburger with clean hands and just start separating the hamburger into little clumps, which takes a little bit of time. But basically you don't want big clumps of hamburger. So my mom literally did this by hand, as do I. Now you can see that I've mixed all the hamburger into the veggie mix. So just to be clear, some people use rutabaga as well. 
Uh, the northern Michigan Michiganders use rutabaga quite a bit. My mom and dad didn't really care for rutabaga, which is why we never used it. But if you like rutabaga, you can peel it, dice it, and put it in with your veggie mix as well. You may also see that I saved about a quarter cup of the meat because at the end, you inevitably have veg at the end that needs to be mixed in with a little bit more meat. Just a little trick my mom taught me. Some people may ask if they can use ground chuck or ground round. Yes, you can use those, but your pasties will be much drier and your veg may not steam as well while they're cooking. The hamburger that we use, that my mom always emphasized, has a 77% meat to fat, uh, to fat ratio. You can get big tubes of this hamburger at Kroger's or your local grocery store. You can also ask your butcher to mix you up hamburger as opposed to ground chuck or ground round. All right, the dough has been chilling for an hour and we are now ready to get started. First I cut it in half. I'm, I'm making 12 rounds. Then I cut each half into another quarter. And then each quarter I cut into three sections to give me 12. And I save the scraps because I often use some ground chicken or ground turkey to make some of these for me too since I don't eat meat or ground beef. I did it as a kid and I enjoyed these as a kid. Pasties have been a very important part of my life, my entire life. I grew up with three other brothers and sisters and we'd be outside all day every day playing and when we came home for dinner you could smell these about a half a block away and all the neighbors loved them and my mom was very generous in giving them to everybody. In fact, her pasties were so well known that she paid for piano lessons with pasties for my brother Danny, my sister Mary, and myself for about three to five years. She'd make two trays and she would bring those trays over to Mrs. Shaw's house. And she was a great piano teacher who taught us a lot. And Mrs. Shaw would then give us all three piano lessons for the week in exchange for pasties. So I've rolled this out, as you can see, into somewhat of an oval. You can roll it a little bit bigger than you think you're going to need. And then I take just a cup from my china set and I take a nice heaping amount of the mixture and I put it in the middle of the oval. And I flatten it, I tend to flatten it a little bit. And you can add water right here. I don't usually do that. My mom didn't do that a lot. You fold this over, pat it down with your hand, and then I take a plate from my china, my everyday china, and I roll around the pasty to seal it. And then I put the excess back under to make another pasty with. Then I take the pasty, pick it up, and I put it on a cookie sheet. Now my mom was a purist and never used parchment paper and it's very good that way but they're also very hard to get off the cookie sheets so I use parchment paper. I'll do one more to show you how these are done. A little bit of flour, make sure your counter is well floured. Shape it in the form of a ball and then flatten it with your fingers, and your palms. Then this is my mom's. This was my very favorite thing I inherited from my mother, her rolling pin. It's about probably 70 years old. 
and I roll it out just like I did the last one. I don't even know if the pasties would stay the same or taste the same without my mother's rolling pin. This again is the meat and veggie mixture, which you can see I'm packing in there. Put it in the middle of your oval, flatten it down a little bit. Again, you don't have to flatten it down, I just think aesthetically it looks better when you do that. Fold it over, press the ends together, and take the plate, you can use a pastry cutter to do that, you can use a knife, but this is how my mom did it, so this is how I do it. Take it and put it onto your cookie sheet and two of them are done. I'll do another 10 and see you back. All right, as you can see, I have them all done. I made a slit in the top of each one for a vent hole and now they're gonna go into the oven at 350 degrees for an hour. The pasties are done and this is what they look like. I have my husband here, Doug, because his mouth is watering and he's been waiting all afternoon for one of these. So I'm going to serve it up to him. Now, some people like their pasty with gravy. My mom never ever served it with gravy. So we use ketchup. Cut it in half. And this is what it looks like inside. I will be happy to give it to my husband. Ketchup. What do you think of pasties? They yeah, love them. They're my favorite dish. All Besides right. chicken paprikash. Thanks everyone for checking out our pasties. We'll see you next time. Mm. Is it hot? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. But.